Lent, a season of reflection, re-evaluation, new beginnings, a time to recognize God's grace in our lives, to find ways to let that realization sink in. Lent, a season of reflection, re-evaluation, new beginnings, a time to recognize God's grace in our lives, to find ways to let that realization sink in and take root, drawing closer to God as we are changed by His love. In this season, we should give, give of ourselves, our time, money, possessions. Giving helps us to see better the needs of those around us. It brings to light those things that may have too high a priority in our lives. It helps us to separate what we need from what we want, stripping away the things that keep us separated from one another and God. We should fast. It helps us to be reminded of the need for God to fill us, whether food or social media, your phone or computer. Fasting allows us to physically feel the ongoing spiritual needs of the soul. It helps us to see the truth that only God can truly satisfy. We should pray. It slows us down, focuses us on God. It enables us to be pulled away from our grip on the world and everything we think it can give us and moves us closer to seeing God in the midst of it all. God is inviting us into this holy season, wanting us to be free from all the obstacles that keep us from His fullness. May we allow ourselves to be stripped down and cleansed so that we may come to understand more powerfully the love of God and be made new in His righteousness and alive in His grace. Good morning. Welcome to service on this Sunday morning where we lost an hour of sleep last night, but I'm glad you all changed your clock so you got here on time this morning. Thank you for those of you who are joining us online, whether it is this morning or throughout the week. As we know that whenever we need some words of God that we can come to this place, whether it's in person or online, and join with them for spiritual reformation. I don't have any announcements up here this morning, unless that's not it. If any, does anyone have any announcements at this time? If not, let us join in our prayer of centering. God of goodness and grace, gather us in your arms of love. Gather us as people of your goodness and grace. Gather us in worship and prayer that we may be strengthened with faith and courage. Gather us as those who are eager to live and to share your goodness and grace. Amen. Now would you please rise as you are able and join in our call to worship. The goodness of God beckons. The grace of God redeems. The love of God welcomes. Now please remain standing as we join in our opening hymn, Amazing Grace.
we have a liturgist this morning? Not. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. The bronze snake. They traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread, there is no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. The second scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Made alive in Christ. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms of Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works with God prepared in advance for us to do. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. Would you please rise for the reading of the gospel? Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be plainly seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. And now would our young folks like to come 
and join me up here this morning. right by you okay what about if you have you ever held a snake before you've never held a snake before okay well what do you think the Israelites felt like when they had all these snakes that were attacking them hmm? Here. what do you think they felt like they felt scared okay Cass, what do you think the Israelites felt like when the snakes were terrified? I would feel terrified. Remember, these snakes were attacking the Israelites, and some of them were dying. So what did God do? Well, let's say, what did the people of Israel do when these snakes were attacking them? They went to Moses. That's right. And why did they go to Moses? Moses had a connection with God. And what did the people tell Moses to do? Stop having God send the snakes, right? But did God do that? What did God do? That's right. God, instead of taking away the snakes, he gave them a connection so that they could survive. What do you think this is symbolic of? What about... Jesus dying on the cross for us. Instead of God taking away sin from this world, which we might die in, he put Jesus on the cross to die for us so that if we do sin, we can look at Jesus and still have eternal life. How cool is that? Okay. Well, let's gather our noisy offering this morning. We're gathering for Midwest Mission. I don't know what the goal is this month, but we're going to gather anyway, okay? So grab some buckets. Cass, do you want to hold it this morning? Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for these gifts that we have gathered and bless the people who provided these gifts. Help us to remember that all gifts come from you. In God's name we pray. Amen. Okay, grab a snack and Casper. Here's this. Put this up. Okay. 
And now it is time for our joys and concerns. Are there any to be shared with the congregation this morning? Uh, I got uh, some good news from Peggy Engel this last week, and she is able to be off oxygen during the day. So we're seeing steps in a positive direction. Um, and I have Anna and Matthew with me today. Prayers for, there's about 30 Riverside students and about 10 parents who will be leaving tomorrow for Washington, D.C. and New York City. So uh, prayers for them to be safe and protected throughout this time. Keaton and I will be, and uh, Lexi will all be going. Um, but just also that we have a great time and learn a little bit about American history. So prayers for the trip. Any others this morning? If not, let's bow our heads in the time of silent prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings you have provided to us, whether it is physical or spiritual, sending your Son that we might have eternal life with you. Help us to remember that you are our refuge and strength, that we can come to you in times of need, no matter what is going on in the world around us. Help us to be your light and your glory in all things that we do, so that we can show others your wonderful path. And above all, help us to remember all these things when we recite the prayer that your Son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to start this morning by trying something. Turn to the person next to you and say these three words. God loves you. So if you would do that right now, just turn to the person next to you and say, God loves you. When we look at our world today and in Christianity, a lot of times when we're proclaiming the word of God, we often tell people that Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Jesus is saving you. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but it, it feels like to me we forget about God directly being in the picture. We are taught that God and Jesus are the same. Even though they are father and son, they are one in the mystery of faith. 
But when we look at the sacrifice Jesus made for us, it is because of God. God sent Jesus down onto the earth so that we might be saved. God turned his back so that Jesus might die on the cross so that we could have eternal life. When we look at our first scripture reading this morning from the book of Numbers, we're taken back to the time when the Israelites were still in the deserts, long before Jesus was on the earth. And the Israelites were struggling. They had been walking around the desert. They were supposed to get to the Holy Land, the Promised Land, a long time ago. But they were still walking and walking because they had been disobedient to God. And they cried out against God. They said, God, you're punishing us. This food that we have is terrible. We have no water. We're tired. We're hungry. What are you doing to us, God? You took us out of Egypt just so that we could die in the desert? And God didn't like that. So what did God do? Well, God sent the plague of snakes against the Israelites. And as we are told, these snakes would come up and bite the Israelites on the heel. And many of them would die. This is fulfilling the scripture from Genesis when it said that the snake will bite the heel of the woman's child and they will crush his head. And the people realize what they have done. They realize they've made a mistake. And they go to Moses and say, Moses, save us. Save us from this plight. Tell God to take these snakes away. So Moses goes to God. And what does God do? Well, as we read, instead of God taking away the snakes, God gives Moses a tool through which the people might be saved. If you're not reading carefully, you might miss that part. God does not take the snakes away he gives the people a way to be saved. And like I talked about with Cass and Maley this morning, we see this replicated with the sacrifice of Christ. It's no mistake that in one of the most important verses in the Bible, John 3.16, just two verses prior, we bring up the point of Moses in the desert and his bronze snake. The people had something they could look at for salvation. But that was a physical object. When we look at Christ's sacrifice today, we have an eternal spiritual object that we can always look at. His sacrifice was important because he was the connection, Jesus was the connection between God and in us. And then we read in Ephesians about how we were dead. About how we were dead in transgressions and sin. How it had consumed our lives and taken away our futures. But then it says in verse 4, but because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. What does it say there? But because of his great love for us, God saved us. God saved us. Like I said before, when we try to spread the word today, whether it is us or people around the world, we become focused on how Jesus loved us. But without God, there is no Christ. So as you go out this week, I encourage you to come up to somebody this week and tell them that God loves them. 
Not just Jesus, but God loves them. Maybe you can start a conversation about how God was showing his love to the Israelite people long before Jesus was here on earth. How he has shown you love in your own life with blessings. And how he will continue to love us for eternity because of the sacrifice his son made on our behalf. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you loved us so much that you gave us your son, your one and only son to save us. We know that you did not send him in the world to condemn the world, but to save it. Help us to remember this lesson daily as we go out proclaiming God's, your good news showing it to others, especially those who need to hear it. Most importantly, Father, we ask that you give us the strength to spread it to the people who need it, not taking the easy way out, but finding how we can be true servants of you. And with that, all God's children said, Amen. It says we have a prayer of yearning this morning. I don't have it in my bulletin, so please look at, at the screen this morning and we will recite the prayer. Gracious God, lift up our hearts this day, for we long to see your salvation. Lift us up from the pits of sin and sorrow, that we may walk in the light of your love and grace. Create us anew as reflections of your light and as offerings of your grace. For we yearn to bless everyone we meet, even ourselves, in your name. In hope and gratitude we pray. Amen. Now it's time of the blessings of our gifts. Remember that we have the two boxes out in the entryway, one for general donations and one for the capital campaign. And now... I will read the first section here up on the screen. In Christ Jesus, we are created to do good things. By God's grace, we are able to be good people. In God's goodness, we are created good. In Christ's grace, we are saved by love, that we may love and be loved. Now would you please join in our prayer of thanksgiving. Merciful God, you have richly blessed our lives with love and bounty beyond measure. Bless these gifts we return to you now, that they may bestow the same richness of your love and grace in the world. Amen. Now would you please rise as you're able and join in how great thou art.
please join in the benediction. We go forth in the light of God's grace. We go forth with the love of Christ's mercy. We go forth with the goodness of spirit's generosity. Go in peace and remember each and every day and spread unto others that God loves you. In God's name, in Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Now please join in our sending forth. Lord, speak to me, verses 1 and 5.